you and then move up here to Kittery? Well, we, we moved up here in 1970 uh, when I graduated from art school and uh, Mim was working at Mass General and we were looking for a place to live within 50 miles from Boston because there was a lot going on in Boston and we thought we'd have to get back all the time. But So we just drove around looking and uh, I think I followed the strawberries into Portsmouth. And so you first lived in Portsmouth? Yeah, we loved Portsmouth. We, uh, we found an, uh, an old apartment that was being remodeled on Market Street and uh, the landlord had us put his name in his little book and we came back and moved in in about six months. Uh, things were a little different then, you know. No you lease. Art school? I graduated uh, in 1970 from the Arts, Art Institute of Boston, Kenmore Square in Boston. Had you been doing any art before that? I did it ever since I was a little kid, but I never took it all that serious. I just It was just kind of play, and now I'm trying to get back to that again. But uh, you trying to get back to that again? Well, yeah, I'll try it because it should be play, I think. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I don't, I don't think I took it that serious, though, until I did go to art school, you know, and uh, found out more about it and, you know, uh, got influenced and, uh, When I don't you know, first that. started, were you, were you more attracted to painting or sculpture or what? I think when I went to art school, I really had no idea. I just knew I was creative and I was encouraged by a lot of people my wife and my next door neighbors and otherwise I probably would have never gone to art school I would have just played around the way I was doing but uh, I got a lot of encouragement that's what made me go and then when, once I got there I really loved doing it so it wasn't any one thing it was just the process well before you got the encouragement you didn't take it that seriously for yourself not or? really it was just yeah. kind of a fun thing to do you know from the time I was a little kid but they must have recognized that you had talent, or y that you loved it. Yeah, because I always I got straight A's all through grammar school, high school in art, but still without much paying attention to it. You know, and I used to go to the library when I was a little kid and uh, look at uh, Hieronymus Bosch paintings, who I still love. Uh, it was one of the only places you could see uh, nude women. And Where did you that grow was up? always a, a, an interest and still is. Uh, and not hand over mass. You grew up in the city. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I went in the Navy after that. And I think that influenced me a lot, you know, going to Europe and seeing all the arts in Spain and Italy and uh, Greece. That was a big influence, but I still, nothing really you know, conscious, you know, wasn't all that conscious. And then when Mim and I got married, we went on a honeymoon to Mexico, and that was another influence. We what there. did you like about Mexico? The art, you know, and the people. The art, people? Yeah. Folk art? Or hmm? Folk art, or? Folk yeah, I like, you know, I'm, yeah, uh, the Aztec stuff, and the Mayan stuff, and, you know. Diego Rivera? Uh, he, I like him, but he wasn't one of my big inspirations. Uh, I'm not, you know, I don't, uh, he's too, too more, I don't do social comment. No. I don't think I do anyway. If I do, it's a different level or something. Uh, so, um, I loved art history when I was in art school, and I had a, w a wonderful art history teacher who made me realize how important it was. So, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Indians from India, American Indians, and Africans, all those uh, were pretty big influences when I was in art school. And I used to spend, oh, maybe two days a week in the museums. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty serious, because I was older than most of the kids in art school, and I was really serious about it. I, I, uh, and I had a couple of wonderful teachers that, that uh, 
sort of made me sort of go, you know, do your own thing, don't worry about it. Because mm -hmm. there were some teachers that would have you copy what they did and do it like them. And then there were some teachers that would teach you how to express yourself or, or give you the, the blueprint for trying to find it anyway, you know, or the map. Uh, and that's where our history came in and spending time in the museums and finding out who feels like you do about life. And then... Can you name any specific artists that... Well, again, going back to Hieronymus Bosch and uh, Miro, uh, Gorky, but I, all each one is for specific reasons. So what you know, I can't think of one that that's total. You know, some for color, some for the way they drew, uh, some for their shapes and forms, uh, some because they had sensuality or. Uh, uh, sexual images, uh, a lot of different reasons. So I, t I really tend to like the abstract expressionists and the uh, surrealists. They seem to talk to me the most. But I think any art that uh, I think, you know, any art that seems like that they put all their love into it, that's, is, that's I don't think it matters whether it's realistic or surreal or colorist, it's when you put all that love into it, uh, I think that's really what makes real art, mm -hmm. you know, not just copying something or, or doing it for money or any of those reasons, or, or even for attention, you know. Uh, I think you sort of have to feel. Is there anybody right now you're particularly fond of? that you like to, you look forward to seeing their work? Or well, I think I, uh, I don't think, no, not really. I think I've looked at a lot of them. There's some I still enjoy looking at. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe a more contemporary, maybe. Well, even, you know, I look in the local scene, I look at everybody's art, and I, again, I like a lot of different works for a lot of different reasons. and. Uh, I think that has to influence you all the time. If you're uh, connected with artists in your community, if you look at their work, then it has to help you. And it has to have some influence on you. I don't think you can shut that out. And I certainly don't try to. You know, I try to absorb it all. But I don't think uh, loving what you do applies just to art. I think that applies to everything. I think uh, if everybody did that, they'd all be artists. You know? Uh, in whatever they did. Do you feel like there's a lot of mutual support amongst the artistic community around here? I think in New England and uh, New Hampshire and Maine, uh, yeah, I do. I feel uh, pretty comfortable and tied in. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think it's, uh, I've certainly got a lot of support from other local artists, you know. So yeah. people come to your shows, you go to their shows? Yeah, you know, we need more people to go and buy, though. Yeah, uh, where are the buyers? <laughs> well, there's too many artists and not enough buyers. <laughs> 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 so I guess, so what do you do? You go on a diet or something? Or? <laughs>
This is an old painting. This painting is probably uh, at least 20 years old. And at the time, I was happy with it, but it doesn't have enough, you know, like depth on me anymore. It's just too flat. It, uh, I wouldn't feel right about putting it out, and uh, it's got a, a wonderful design to it, and I can really do something with it, it you know. So I'll work on this. I usually work on an old one sometimes if I, until I run out of them, but I haven't run out yet. And then I work on a bunch of small ones, and I use up the same paint uh, actually on all of them, you know. Uh, I can, uh, and sometimes it really, the ones that I use up the paint on sometimes come out better than the ones I'm trying to do. Now that's better already, and I, it is. And, uh, I didn't even think about that one. I do much better when I get lost, mm -hmm. and I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But in order to get to that stage, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I'll float in and out from... Uh, Conscious to unconscious, uh, intuitive, uh, uh, I don't know, the whole range actually, intellectual. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I think it takes the whole range to get there, but I really, the part I enjoy the most is, is the discovery of being lost, like, uh, mm -hmm. and not even being there, just like, it, like someone else is doing it instead of you. But, uh, mm -hmm. and that's usually when things come out better for me anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, the harder I try, the worse they get, usually, mm -hmm. you know. So right now, in the big one that you're working on, you're... you're I'm just loosening up. It's too tight, mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm going to do a lot of new things to it, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, give it a little more depth. Mm -hmm. Are you going to get rid of all your um, dark black blue? I don't know that yet. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I forget what I started from. Most of these... Most of these are all done from uh, models, originally. All, you know, most of these work are done from the human form of models, except with, with the exception of those two. Those were done from uh, photo collages that I uh, Xerox copied and then painted over. That's mm -hmm. kind of an experiment, but they're coming pretty good. I'm just uh, they don't have enough depth yet either. Uh, I'm trying to get away from being too flat. I'm trying to improve my space and uh, depth and uh, mm -hmm. movement. And, uh, I almost even went to, uh, what do you call that, uh, when uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. But my mind doesn't work in, in real perspective. But I want to still give it perspective. Mm -hmm. So I have to do it a different way that I really don't know how I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't painted for about, th is the sound on? Huh? I haven't painted for about three weeks. And this has got me painting again. Now I'll get started. I haven't, my time has been. Disconnected or something.
Ikan yang ini. You know that every a lot of people are dead set against using black. You know, and they really prejudice a lot of people's minds on account of <laughs> what they do. They're against yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of people really uh, are down on black. Huh. Because it can leave such a, a hole in the, you know. Black receipts. Yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of things they tell you in art school, you know. Don't use black, don't use yellow. Really? Yeah. I like the yellows in this one. Okay. So how long have you been working? Okay. So what is this piece that you're working on here with? What is it? Yeah, have you, is it a new one? Well, actually, no, it's, a, it's an old painting that I started uh, in the 70s. Really? That I, that I thought it was done, and then over the years I've looked at it and looked at it, and it never it's became less satisfying all the time. So. I probably decided maybe six months ago to work on it and just get into doing it now because it was kind of uh, flat and static, you know? You were just saying something about the, uh, the use of black not being... Uh, oh, yeah. And the, oh, in art school? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. A lot of times in art school, uh, they'll tell you not to use black or don't use yellow. Or, and sometimes uh, it sinks in too much and you... Uh, it can limit you, and you'll have people tell you a lot of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know pe I know artists now that would never use black. <coughs> I don't well, I can see the black background here is very you know, it's flat, but it also uh, receives. But, uh, but uh, are you bringing things forward? Here I, I don't know. I don't use much green oh. for some reason. No, I'm just playing around. I have no just idea playing. really what I'm doing. But I'm just trying to bring this a little more to life. Mm -hmm. uh, and mess it up a little bit so it does something. You know, your paintings have such interesting shapes in them. It's what makes them recognizable. But I, I can't identify what these shapes are. Where do the shapes come from that you... Uh, you your well, there's a history to it. Part of it's art history, and the rest is I use a lot of sexual imagery, uh, inspired by uh, beautiful women. <laughs> hmm. But uh, that's really where it comes from. It comes from that energy, and then it goes into a fantasy world. But. Uh, some of it came from nature, you know, because I studied nature, and I, a lot of it came from art history. Uh, it's kind of a mix, really. But, uh, but mostly when I draw or paint, or to get something started, I usually use a model, and I use the excitement and the energy and the line and the form, every, everything from the person, like, you know? Mm -hmm. And that gets me to put something down on canvas. And sometimes I'll use, uh, like, Chinese erotic art or Japanese erotic art. So it's that energy, that sexual energy, that uh, gets me going. And then once I start working on something, who knows? It's just mm -hmm. a game, you know? Just kind of mm -hmm. playing. Mm -hmm. It looks but, like fun. But uh, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I enjoy it. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> It's just kind of fun. I don't know. Well, sometimes you'll have uh, images in your paintings that uh, look like little animals or birds, and sometimes right, yeah. they're just abstract. That's right, yeah, because yeah. that, that beginning is just a start, and then uh, they could be underneath a microscope or uh -huh. a magnifying glass or uh, even a telescope, you know? It could be any of those things. Well, when you think of a piece like this, does it already have a title? Do you work at all? 
No, it probably had a title years ago, but no, it has no. I'll probably title it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do use titles, and I usually have fun doing them. Mm -hmm. uh, titles are good. And sometimes, if I use a model, sometimes I'll title it beforehand. You know, I may use the name or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but it depends, and sometimes other people come in and have a better title than I do, and I'll use that. That's happened maybe three times. Mm -hmm. uh, my title, their title, was better than my title. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know if it's the same in writing or not. Is it when you? Well, I'm just. I just was wondering when you start. Uh, for example, did you start on this when it was uh, full size, or did you make a smaller drawing first and then enlarge it? You know, so I don't remember how I started this one, really. It, you know, it's so long ago. I don't really remember. Uh, so, uh, one thing, it looks like uh, it looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't. Uh, most of the time, you know, I do drawings before. But a lot of times I do the drawing right on the canvas, mm -hmm. and uh, a few times, not a lot, but a few times I have used a drawing or a sketch to start a painting, but I prefer using a person <coughs> or something a little more exciting than your own drawing to get going, you know? But some people don't use anything to get going. They just stand in front of the canvas and start. I, I don't know. That doesn't work for me. I don't know why. I tried that. and. It doesn't work. I need something to get me into it, you know? Well, in your background, did you ever draw realistically? Only when I had to <laughs> in art school. Yeah. That's the only time. And uh, it was too tough for me. It was hard for me to do. Uh, and it wasn't any fun. Yeah, it was no it was more like it was it was more like work instead of like play for me now some people it's it's play for them but for me it was more like work uh, i had to try too hard some point I don't know when but we might may want to switch to a drawing thing a lot of a lot of these photographs that I have around the studio I use for uh, starting an artwork or a drawing or a painting French or Italian. I'm French or Italian a lot of these. You have a lot of books around. Do you uh, do you read a lot? I look at pictures mostly. Uh, the only thing I ever read is for inspiration or information. I hardly ever read just for pleasure. I, I, I paint and draw and that I do that for pleasure, but when I read, I read for information and uh, inspiration, you know, to, mm -hmm. uh, just to find out things or get excited about things. Or, uh, but uh, my story is, I don't know, life is a nice story, I think, and I'm, so I don't really like to read stories. A lot of people do. Mm -hmm. But I like to, I'd rather live than read, you know? Mm -hmm. I used to read poems, too, but I don't read them very much anymore. How about music? Do you like music? I always have music. 
Uh, the only reason there's no music right now is because it would interfere with the video, but I always, I do everything to music. I listen to music all day, almost all the time. Uh, so it is very important. And besides music, the next thing I like best is silence. Mm -hmm. And the next thing after that is talking with people. I usually do better when I'm not thinking about what I'm doing so much, too. You know, I mean, that's almost true in everything. If I think about it too much, it gets in my way. Sometimes you have, uh, as you do in this painting, a kind of border at the bottom of your painting. Is, what is that about? Is there any... Is there any is well, in this case, and, uh, you know, I do use a lot of horizontals and vertical. This one doesn't really have any square stuff in it, which usually gives a little contrast. The only thing that's given any contrast is that pushing up. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's probably a bed, I would guess. Okay. You know, yeah. all those things are in a bed. Could be a garden bed or a bed bed, you know. So, uh, let's see. Anything I can do over here. like to be very productive. I do, do seem to get work done, but uh, I'm working in that direction to, to have, uh, put, you know, saying that I want more time isn't the right way to put it. It's, uh, I guess I want to be able to do this more is a better way of saying it because uh, I'm not deprived in, in any area. You know, it's not, you know, I'm happy doing everything I do, but uh, I'd like to do more, to have some more time with this. Mm -hmm. all well, else. you've been painting steadily since about, what, the 1970s or even earlier? Well, I, st I started, hmm, probably, yeah, probably just late 60s, really. Uh, the first paintings I ever did, I did with rollers you know, and mostly textural and uh, some primitive, you know, things uh, things I took photographs and co copied stuff, you know. Uh, and this, this, I don't know, they weren't too bad, but uh, this is quite a different mostly in art school, I think, is when I really started to, you know, paint. I had good teachers in art school, so that made a difference. Do you keep in touch with any of those teachers that you have? Uh, most of them, uh, let me see. I think they're all dead. You know? So I do keep in touch with them. You know? uh, yeah, I had some really good ones, and I, I don't ever forget them. Uh, one Did guy. You, didn't huh? you receive a degree recently or something from a school? Oh. From, that was a year or two ago? <laughs> they did that to get people to to join their auxiliary. I think you know that was that was all about. Uh, yeah, that was. I think that's what happened there. They they gave out a bunch of free degrees, hoping that they get people to give more money to the school. That's really. You know, what Those are called honorary. <laughs> honorary, yeah, honorary. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I did it, but. It's just kind of fun to say you, you have a degree, but I don't think it makes much difference, especially in art. 
it may make difference in some areas, but it impresses people sometimes. But well, maybe you need a degree to teach art or something. Yeah, but I, you know, if yeah, if you teach in a certain place, I suppose. You went over to Vermont was it last year to study or? Art New England puts on some wonderful uh, workshops, and that was three years ago that I did mm -hmm. a workshop. Uh, I was going to do one last year, but my mother died, and uh, so I postponed it. But uh, uh, yeah, I studied. I was there only a week, but it was wonderful. I, you know, I'd like to do more of that, but we'll see what happens. And you managed to travel several times each year. I know you like Montreal. Do you get inspired up there? Yeah, I do. I love the energy in Montreal. I love the people. I love the energy. I like everything about it. I like Mexico. I like the people. Uh, I'm not really a big traveler, but it's kind of fun to do once in a while. Uh, I think my, I like people, that's one of my favorite things. And the crazier the better. In a nice way, anyway. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. I'm not going to do any more on that. I'm just going to let it sit and, uh, and see what happens. Because a lot of times they'll do stuff on their own. Yeah, I'm just going to let that sit for a while. Okay, great. So, let me see. Well, I'm see if I'll do another one. Okay. Anyway, I may combine two things, or I'll do a small one. That's, but anyway, this is. I'm. Are we? Are we on the? Uh, this one I'm just starting. What I did is I just put some of the lines in, but this is a this is from a photograph that I took, and I do I do use that sometimes. Uh, I think the work has to have some kind of uh, like emotional content, and uh, I think that's really important to have that. Uh, Bruce Lee agreed with that. <laughs> He said, if you didn't have some emotional content and you're fighting, you couldn't fight. Uh, so this is my wife, Mim, and that's my mother, Hazel, who died recently. And this pet picture was taken probably about a year and a half before she died. So I'm going to use that to start a painting about her, because I don't know if I've ever done a painting about her. And then, then afterwards, I'll show you how other ways that I work, but this is just for that particular thing. So what I did, I put all the lines in first because I like the design, and the rest will just be off the cuff, like just uh, uh, some kind of a translation, like uh, if you were translating a foreign language from one language to the other. Uh, so i got to decide what I'm going to use. I guess I'll, I'll use this pencil right here, what I do with it. I had one. Must have lost it. Huh? Oh. Hey, this is what I use. 
I should draw more. I don't really draw enough. Usually I just draw uh, for the painting, right onto the painting. Or I do a drawing for, and then paint on the drawing, you know. But I don't draw just for drawing. And do I probably should, use, you know. Do you ever use pastels or anything? Not for a long time. I have, I have hundreds of them, you know, but I, I haven't used them for a long time. So, so when you say just do a drawing, you mean like a just for the sake of a drawing and leave it a drawing. Leave it as, as a and I drawing. I haven't done that for a long time, you know. So th all I'm doing here is I'm getting some of the design and shapes. The same thing if I was using a model, I'm doing the same kind of response that I usually do. Uh, And then the work will go pretty much on its own between uh, what I started with. It's kind of like a translation. Now it's on its own. I won't. I won't bother to look at that anymore. Uh, that's that's it. That's, and that's how I work. And this was done. Now this is a drawing. I don't. It's probably going to turn into a painting, but it's still a drawing right now. But I did it with the intentions of uh, doing a painting from it. That was my intention. Whether I stick to it or not, I don't know. But I had a model for this, and I had a model for that, and they were done in two different rooms. Uh, one was one was in the studio. It was the same model, and then that and that's how I uh, got going on these two. Now, whether they end up drawings or paintings, I haven't decided yet. But uh, that's pretty much what goes on. Uh, there. So let's see if I feel like that guy on TV. Uh, <laughs> the guy who teaches you how to paint. Yeah, but th that's... Uh, You know, I was just thinking when I was following those lines, you know, when you were a kid you followed the dots, you had those books where you used to follow the dots and stuff, and I used to love doing those, you know. I used to have a ball doing those. Uh, I don't know if they still do those or not.